Hi, everyone. Welcome to the TimingResearch.com Analyze Your Trade, episode number 183 for January 4th, 2022. We are recording this at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of TimingResearch.com. And today I have arranged for Sunny Harris to join us again. And you should be seeing her screen right now. And uh, we're going to get a look at how she, she looks at charts and looks at uh, potential trades. And I have also arranged for the option professor to be back to moderate. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Okay, great. Thanks, David. And another uh, pretty big day in the markets after yesterday. So uh, we'll have to see how the rest of the week uh, plays out. We got a uh, jobs report Friday, so it's going to be pretty exciting. That's uh, good. Sunny, yeah. Uh, Sunny, uh, before we get started, just a quick background on yourself and uh, what's going on down at your company. Well, I am a mathematician, a programmer, an author, and a trader. I've been trading for 41 years. And I've developed my own indicators that I use, one that's called Sunny Bands, and the other is my dynamic moving average, which you can see on the bottom of this chart. It goes gold and red and then purple and green, and it gives me signals where to enter. Sure. So that's my dynamic moving average histogram, and on the top, you can see the Sunny Bands. Great. And of course, um, that's a big uh, advantage that people will get today is you can do a little bit of analysis using your proprietary signals, which they wouldn't get if they didn't show up. So yeah. <clears throat> that's a good deal for them. Um, uh, as far as uh, the list here, you want to get right into it, or do you have any market oh, commentary? No, let's, or? let's do it. Let's okay. Do it. Well, so yeah, let's I'm start out. A lot of fun. That's my market commentary. It's yeah, a, absolutely. It was good today. Yeah. Oh, well, those energy shares, boy, they really paid off today. Did you watch the Nasdaq as it dropped precipitously? Yeah. It went down and then it snapped back a little bit at the end, but it still definitely yep. had a heavier feel to it. It did. Yeah. But again, it looks like they might also be scaring people out because the Q4 earnings for uh, semiconductors are supposed to be just uh, very, very big. So, yeah. So maybe they're trying to get people out before the earnings come out, but we'll have to see what happens, you know. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about NVIDIA because, you know, it is the Cadillac of the uh, semi space and, uh, you know, it's had a huge run. So obviously people want <clears throat> to figure out if there's more in the tank or what's going on. So NVDA, what are you thinking? Can you see it there on my screen? Sure. Yeah, it's as far as I'm concerned, that thing's going <clears throat> sideways. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, the, my dynamic moving average up here on the top of the chart is going sideways. It's right. flat. I don't like to trade when it's flat. I wait for it to penetrate one direction or the other. And I think it's going back up to 332. But, uh, you know, we've got a trend line here that goes like this. Yep. And it has to break that before it's going to move anywhere. Yeah. And something like earnings could be the catalyst for something like that to happen. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, and, and, and in your view, you know, just looking at the basics of it, it's not hard to understand why after a run like that, it would take a pause, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah markets right. trend and then they go sideways 70% yeah. of the time and trend 30% of the time. Right. I mean, look how long this period in the middle was <clears throat> sideways. Yeah. Oh, long there was a time. lot of time. There was a lot of time where it was just going sideways. And then, of course, when it did that split, that was the beginning Dang. of the, yeah, that was the beginning of the big move, just like it was with Apple. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apple did a split and all of a sudden it went uh, up quite a bit too. Well, when they split, people can actually afford to buy shares. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that was the way it worked. So anyway, yeah. your view on NVIDIA is A, it is uh, going sideways, so it's not that exciting. But B, if it could get above around 330, it would be back on the bicycle. Yeah, if it goes, if it breaks that trend line, uh, it's it's definite buy. Yeah. Up to uh, any other semiconductor, since we're in the sector, any other semis you look at? Uh, AMD or Taiwan Semi is very popular now. What about TSM AMD. or AMD? Yeah. Same story with AMD, mm -hmm. and it's got the same trend line on it. So we put this on here. You know, it, it's got to break that trend line. Yeah. The, the encouraging thing is you see the DMA is flat right here it hasn't gone down to the lower sunny bands it's still hanging out right in there where that dma is so i which think which is a sign right of strength there. to you right sign of strength to me yeah what about uh tsm because i don't think that's in the same exact uh tsm i don't TSM, have that taiwan one. semiconductor 
Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's the one you want to be going with. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. So we've got a horizontal line that goes like that. I call these things attractors. Yeah. There's support and resistance, but you know, I call my sunny bands attractors too, because they attract price to the top and attract them back to the bottom. Right. So that's a that's exciting. Yeah. And it could be a precursor to the other ones taking off, maybe. Who knows? Uh, yeah. I would I would expect that to happen. The old birds of a feather theory. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's a technical theory, but I've heard it well, said. Well, it's the birds of a fe feather theory or a bird in the hand where two better in the Better than two Something in the like bush. That. No, better than two <laughs> in the bush. You know, one in the hand, but in two in the bush. All right, let's uh, click over to the next one here. And we're talking about Microsoft, which some people also think has had a long way and might be slowing down. What are you thinking here? And we got that same sideways story. Somebody's yeah. waiting for something to actually happen. Because yeah, we've got a learnings. lot of a lot of stocks right now are just sitting right in that middle of that DMA line. Yeah. So it's just been going sideways for weeks. And uh, yeah, same, now you're a tech, you're a technician, but oh, you know, just uh, from the uh, cycle of news, uh, Q4 earnings will be coming out between now and February 10th. Mm. And obviously, uh, if they are uh, very good, which is anticipated um but if there's surprises on the upside you know that could be the fuel to get you going yeah well i'm waiting for those surprises i'm holding microsoft which you can see from my chart yeah but a whole 11 dollars in it right at the moment but uh i think it's gonna i think we're gonna see some serious upside yeah yeah um what about uh costco cost this thing uh got going during the pandemic and it's never stopped Oh, it's, it's, yeah, I was looking at that chart after they called out that they wanted that symbol today, and I thought I'd better buy some of that. Yeah. It's a little expensive at 564, but look at it. It just keeps going. You know, these companies, a lot of them are buying back their own stock, and that mm -hmm. certainly doesn't uh, hurt having that kind of a bid plus that kind of a reduction of the shares outstanding. Yeah. You know, one Costco's of the things people one of the company. things people love about Bitcoin, Sonny, is that it's got a limited universe of supply. You know, uh, when you think about a lot of stocks like Google, Microsoft, Apple, you know, these people are buying back their stock, which is reducing the amount of stock available. So, if mm. you're into scarcity a little bit, you know, some of these stocks are giving you that that aspect as well. Mm -hmm. You know, Costco is a local company to me. It's a San Diego company. I know the Price Brothers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they had a good idea. Go uh, with the where go with the warehouse thing and throw a hot dog stand in there. I I was in there one day when they were just still a box store and really small. Yeah. And this woman came and they weren't serving anybody. They didn't I mean you you find out what you want, you bring it to the counter and you pay for it. That's it. That's yeah. all the service. And a woman came in and she said, "Can I get somebody to help me out?" And the uh, attendant said to her, Sure. Which way did you come in? <laughs> <laughs> I'd yeah. love that. I, I go to these stores like that and uh, it amuses me because uh, you say you're going in for dog biscuits, you know, and, and they'll oh, say, yeah, we have five dollars later. You got five thousand dog biscuits here. Or one was animal crackers. I never saw a bigger animal cracker uh, bowl <laughs> than they had there. It was like animal crackers for life. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway, great company and uh, and uh, still looks like it's got some legs. Uh, next one up is Telephone, which was badly beaten uh, because of a number of factors. Um, the dividend yields supposedly like 8% now, but that's supposed to get cut very dramatically in the summer. But um, it looks like it might be done with 22, right? Well, it broke out of this trend line. Yeah. It broke out of the trend line. So I think we're, I, well, we'll at least go up to this Fibonacci line that I have drawn here. What's that so number it, coming at around 30 or 29? Uh, mm, 31 something. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that might oh, be. Oh, no, that's up higher. Sorry. This is 0%. So it's mm, 2640. 2640, which is a good pop from 22. Yeah. You know, and uh, well, if, it go, if it goes through that number, uh, what would be your next objective? Uh, back up here to the 2983 Fibonacci line. Yeah. which is also an attractor as it goes across you see it it yep. hits these prices over and over i i make it tractors at the preponderance of price so when it you know price will test previous highs and lows all the time 
So, I, you know, that's 29 changes where I think it would be next. All right. Well, the next one up on the block is uh, FTAI, uh, not a company that I'm familiar with, but let's see what they do. What do they do? Fortress Trans something. Fortress. Oh, I know this. Yeah. Trans. Fortress uh, Transportation. Okay. Yeah, I don't yeah, know them. And it is, uh, what do you call it? It's a very popular stock. Hmm. It, recommended, uh, I've, I've seen it recommended on some of the news uh, broadcasts. Let me show you something else. See here, this the histogram on the bottom when it turns green, that's the buy signal. Yeah. So that that was a buy signal. So this is the kind of deal where you should already be in. And right there is where I gave a short signal. Yeah. So and the trade called. might be behind you. Oh uh, no, I think it's going to go on down to my DMA line and then bounce again. Okay. But I like I say, for the more. the upside might be taking a pause for sure. Yes, yes, but it's got more upside to it, I think. Yeah, and where would you like to see that one uh, stop going down? What's the area of support? Well, let's put a Fibonacci on it, and we'll see. Oh, it just it touched surprise. It touched sixty one point eight right here. Mm -hmm. Drop back down to the fifty percent line. It's a little below that, and I'm thinking thirty one point six after that. So you don't want this thing in the twenties. Uh, if it goes in the twenties, something's going wrong. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely say that. And the gold is on top. I, I still, it, the lowest it's going to go is twenty six. Okay, and that would be a real flush job. Yeah, and then that's you know I'd be a buyer at that price. Yeah. To see how how the orange line goes across here from all these prices from history, all that will hold as good support, I think. The next one up is uh, MARA. I think that's Marathon, isn't it? Yep, Marathon Digital Holdings. And I've got Fibonacci on that again, based on this move down. And I could add another Fibonacci and go up higher. Uh, let's make that a one. Oh, that didn't do it. Let's, don't worry about it then. Um, it's got a lot of support right down here on this Fibonacci line at 34 and change, 35 right in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to bet on that one, though. What do they do? It looks like a lot of those green lines are pointing down, huh? Yeah. And, the, and see the DMA has a purple line on top? Yeah. That means the overall direction is down. Yeah, the, you know, when you're trying to buy something that's cheap, because you think it just won't get any cheaper. That's one way of investing. The other one uh, is to go with the flow. And if you notice, when people are making their most monies, it's when you're going with the flow, not trying to buy the you know the uh, the uh, gem in the junkyard. Yeah. Because, like I say, your your lines there pretty much are pretty evident on if you're going to be buying something, you want the thing to be pointing up. Well, I, yeah, I definitely would want it to bounce up and touch this midline before yeah. I'd be a buyer of this. I'm not going to, you know, never catch a falling knife. No. And that's a falling knife. Yep. Yeah. It may be basing here, you know, like I say, but, uh, you know, unless something out of the world happens, uh, going back to 50 or 60 is is nothing imminent on that. I would agree. And this has, uh, this area that awesome. you have underneath, though, is that like a very oversold? Is that, you know, down there in the... Uh, yeah, you know. yeah. So that is extremely oversold. So you it got that going for you. Oversold. You see how deep this went. So yeah, uh, you know, and it it, protect, it predicted that uh, right there. That's when it went short. So you know, it was a good good entry for shorts, and here's where it says go long. So it looks like it needs to do a little bit more basing, maybe. And then yeah. move up from there. Okay, uh, let's turn over to the next guy here, which is Target. And Target, you know, went way down and gave you a great opportunity to buy. Um, and I'm wondering, was that a bargain down there? Or uh, looks like it to me. Let's do the vertical line here, and that's the buy entry. That's where you'd get in at that one. This is an extremely oh. well-run company. Oh yeah, yeah. And they're huge in digital now, which seems to be the rage. 
So it went down to what, 221 right in there on my lower outer band. It's bounced up, it's above the DMA now. We're going to 241, looks like. Yeah. And the PE ratio on this thing, for those who look at that, I, I heard was very much discounted to Walmart or other ones. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's what they said. I haven't really verified all that, but uh, the valuation doesn't seem to be rich anymore. Of course, they took a heck of a lot out of the price, you know? Yeah. Well, they, I, take four, I they took 40 bucks out of the price, I think, didn't they? 40 bucks? I don't know. From I the don't watch any the fundamentals at all. I'm totally mathematical. Yeah, I'm just saying the, on the math here, didn't it go from like 260 and change all the way down to 220? So that's a $40 haircut. 268 to 221, yeah. Yeah, so obviously... Uh, the valuation would be a little bit more attractive when you take 40, 50 bucks out of a stock price, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they certainly seem to still be making money. So. And that's a good price area. I mean, that's, that's not like the $500 sum that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Costco. Five, and if you five, notice your other four. indicators underneath, uh, when they get that far down, it's generally not a bad time to take a bite. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, the next one up is GLD, which I'm sure people are trying to figure out what side of the road they want to play it because it goes to 1870, then it goes to 1770, then it goes to 1830, and it goes back to 1780. Now we're at 18 and change. Do you want to look at the gold futures? Do you want to look at GLD? Well, let's look at GLD because that's what the guy asked for, and then we'll go over to the okay. futures. Okay. We'll be yeah, polite, so, Sonny. So this is just, I, you know, I look at gold on a weekly chart. Because you can see that it's uh, clear. No, that's not. Let's look at the futures contract. You know, from on a weekly gold contract, it needs more data. That's what it says. I'm gonna give it 90 years. Where's my mouse? I've got five monitors here on this computer. So see how it, it's got a lot higher than it could go. You know, it could go up to there, but I don't see people running to gold anymore like they used to whenever you stream inflation, they get all excited and run to gold. I yeah. don't see it happening this time. Well, that dollar is pretty strong. It's still at 96, 97 on the dollar index. So, yeah. And our interest rates are clearly higher than the rest of the world. So that's yeah. one of the problems. And then, of course, a lot of people are buying into the story that the inflation is going to go away. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. you know, gasoline is 50% higher than it was last year. Right. Food is 27% higher than it was last year. Right. So what do they mean? 6% inflation. Yeah. No, it's a joke. Uh, but the point is, is that, uh, and then of course, there's uh, this big drum being built that uh, uh, beat that uh, crypto uh, digital has replaced gold as a store of value. So uh, there's a lot of things working against it, but uh, mm -hmm. Frankly, that's the environment that you'd have before a big run. I think Bitcoin has a little, maybe a little bit left down to go on the downside, but it really is touching this Fibonacci line and, and not breaking through it. So, oh, and your other indicators is looking like oversold, huh? Yep. So, this would be know, definitely a so time to got, keep the periscope we've got a, a buy signal right there on Bitcoin. Yeah. And that's another dead market as far as, you know, the enthusiasm has been taken right out of the room. Yeah, it was all over Facebook and yeah. Twitter and stuff for a while. And then people yeah. are, don't talk about it anymore. Right. And like any market that goes down, they don't talk about it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they used to talk about Viacom at 100. Now they can't uh, spell Viacom, you know. Yeah. Uh, all right. So anyway, on the gold, you know, because I'm very interested in this myself. I have uh, some Newman mining that I just trimmed a little bit because it had a nice run from 52 to 62. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, why don't you throw Newman up there? And because uh, okay, it's a it's a great con it's one of the Cadillacs of the gold stock area. What's the symbol? Uh, NEM. NEM. Nancy Edward Mary. So. Got it. Yeah, it's on the top of your band. So I did a little trimming up there. I didn't think that was a bad idea. Good place and, to trim. Yeah. And then on the pullback, where do you think it might uh, be able to hold up? Uh, probably at the center line here. The midline's at uh, 58, 78. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll hold that. Yeah. 
And if it does that, you know, that's a nice time because this thing pays 3.75% dividend. When I first bought it, it was paying 4% dividend. And that's a heck of a lot of good cash flow on a a tangible asset. You know what I mean? It is. It is. But But it's got a broadening formation. If you look at that, we've got a megaphone. And does that generally lead to the upside? It generally leads to, to churning. Oh, I got you. So that we could be in for more of this back and forth action for a while. We could, unless it breaks this upper trend line. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'll, I'll trim against that. And if it gets above it, I'll just come back in. I'm not from the school of I have to buy it lower than where I sold. I'm from the school of I have to buy it at a better time than when I sold. Yeah. Look at this horizontal preponderance of price activity goes right across there to where we almost are. Yeah. So yeah, you could feel you could feel that we're at a little bit of a crossroads. Yeah, because uh, would, it actually was down line, today. It was down today while gold was up, so that was a little weird too, you know. Huh. But it might be, you know, might be like uh, it might be telling us something that uh, maybe the rally in gold won't go through eighteen fifty, you know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not bullish on gold right now. Yeah. Uh, this line's at sixty two sixty one, where it's about where you got out. Yeah. Uh, I would watch it to break that line before I'd be a buyer. I'd rather buy at higher prices, going higher than it. Try to get a bargain at the bottom. Yeah, you can only make money uh, when things go higher. You you don't get money just because uh, the price uh, you think was fantastic. It's it's only fantastic <laughs> if it's higher the next day. You know. That's true. Well, That's anyway, true. the next guy up is AMD, and I think we looked at it. But you want to take another quick peek? Uh, advanced micro devices. I think we said it was in that same uh, window as. Uh, yeah. As uh, the other one. Uh, yeah, the, the Nvidia. It's a, it's a twin of Nvidia, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's that's the one that we already looked at. I put yeah. the trend line on that, and, and the one that was breaking out was the Taiwan Semi. So yes, that that was the one that had legs compared to the other. That was this one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there you go on that. Next uh, guy up here is Square, and uh, they're the payment system. Uh, uh oh that's not an so it's an sq huh sq yeah supposedly uh the payment space is rebounding but i think that's more maybe more for mastercard visa maybe a little paypal mm-hmm. but is this thing going to be on there too let's look at this on a weekly basis and see what we've got we've got uh horizontal line right there that it broke it doesn't even have sunny bands on it i don't have enough data on it so let's uh weekly come on where's the customize we'll give it 90 years back again and and we got lots of data and i don't see much below that to hold it we've got it right here see how it goes up and touches down up and comes back down and touches so it's below the current attractor as far as i'm concerned I mean, it might, and look how far down this histogram has gone. You talk about oversold. Wow. Yeah, there could be something going on there because, uh, well, of course, the valuation was probably right? huge. So that's number one. And number yeah. two is uh, maybe uh, the growth is uh, slowing quite a bit. But whatever the reason, and, you, you're working with the yeah. numbers. The numbers are telling you uh, that at best it's going sideways. Yeah. I mean, it might even go down a little bit further. You know, I I wouldn't put that past it either because we've got Fibonacci lines that go from there to there. Put it at the 61.8, would take it down to 129. And it's at 156 right now. Yeah. So one more leg to drop is also a risk. The bottom line is it uh, lacks upside momentum. Mm-hmm. Definitely has that. Yeah. Well, the next play on the docket here is PANW. And that's not ringing a bell, but maybe the Palo name of Palo Alto the... Networks. Oh, Palo Alto. Yes, that's not something I've been doing too much with. It's down pretty hard today, though. Huh? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It, it dropped and hit that midline precisely. Um, I don't know what the news is on them. I don't, I don't watch news very much, but uh, it looks to me like a drop that would have had news associated. So it had a sell signal there and another sell signal to confirm it there, and it still went up. This could be one that's affected by the rates going up because, again, 
when you're uh, discounting uh, future earnings way down the road and the rates go up, sometimes that's when they hit these kind of things. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, and of course, look at the room move it's had. Maybe Tom, Dick and Harry wanted to take some money off the table, huh? Yeah, we did it at 563. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But I, I also would not be surprised if it drops all the way down to 466. Yeah. I mean, the gold line's on top, so that's overall bullish. It doesn't give me any reason. It's not capitulating. It's not moving slowly down or, or rapidly down. I mean, this is a big move today, but it still didn't penetrate the midline. Right. But right now, it's something that you'd be kind of, uh, if you own it, maybe you'd hold it. Uh, maybe you'd wait a little bit if you ever wanted to buy anything. Huh? Right. And see, see more information, see how it comes out. It's a very popular company. There's no doubt about it. And obviously, they've made a lot of people a lot of money. But, uh, you know, at some uh, point in time, obviously, things do level off. Um, CL is the next one. CL. Colgate Palmolive. Well, consumer staple. Oh, look at that. We got to have toothpaste. That's right. Yeah. I'm sure it's had a good run because I had a consumer staple ETF XLP and the thing went up very nicely. But one, now lately it's been slowing down. So maybe that's what the guy wants to know about. Because yeah, we've got a one wave here and then an ABC for your two wave. There's your three. Yeah. A really quick little four and that's five. That could be the end of that for a little bit. Yeah. If you count the Elliott waves. Oh, and it's it's touch this attractor that's right over here on, on this price back from 2021, like about June or so. Right. So I think it's gonna take a little breather. Hey, Sonny. Yes, sir. I think it's coming from you. There's some kind of squeaking or feedback or something. Oh, I'm something sorry, there. that's my dog. Can you get her? Hold her for a few minutes. That one? Oh, that's is, it, that's is it? That's my dog. She she has bells on because otherwise oh, I, okay. on I thought okay. it was uh, I thought it was Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. I don't know. It sounds like Christmas, right? <laughs> I thought it was like a uh, like a speaker picking up feedback <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think of the Clorox? We figure it may be extended right now. Your bottom indicator looks a little overbought. The uh, it's yeah, it looks up like it's going to take a little drop down. To, yeah. uh, it could. Could go as far as um, 83 and then possibly on down to 81, but it, it still looks like a really strong stock. Yeah. It's just a matter of timing, I think. It's a buy the dipper. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next guy up is Lowe's. Have people finished fixing their houses up yet, or is there more to come? Oh, I think there's more to come. I, I uh, you know, it sees we've got this. Fibonacci move from there to there, a nice strong move, and then a little correction. And then now it's just trying to see if it can go back and explore that price at 264. Um, I wanted to take a look also, as long as we're looking at Lowe's at Home Depot, similar story. And Home Depot has got an attractor right there where it, it hit that and moved down off of it. So, well, look, there's another one here. Oops, not that one. Horizontal line. So right there, see how right in between those two, price has explored that. And it wouldn't be surprising to see it drop, but the uh, people out here at least are still building and fixing up their homes and yeah. buying more. I live about a mile from a Home Depot and they're, they're over there all the time. Yeah. And the same story with Lowe's. Yeah, I think I remember there was one over on El Camino Real. Isn't there one over there? Uh, that one's gone now. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, the value of the homes have gone up and people definitely are in love with their homes because they're so um, uh, much of their they net have worth. To stay there uh, all the time now. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure they'll keep fixing it up as much as possible. Um, next one up is IBM, which was recommended by somebody on. Uh, one of the business news broadcasts and they were building oh, a good that. case that this is where you want to be. It looks like yeah. a pretty good deal. Yeah, look at that. 
So we've got IBM high there. We've got another horizontal line that goes about right through here, holding that up. It's had a nice run. I don't think it's going to go straight up to 145. That would be kind of exciting for it to happen. And I've got a short signal on the histogram. So the histogram thinks it might be a little overbought at this point, but it sure had a nice run today too. Yeah, it really did. And, uh, you know, people do think uh, that they are figuring themselves out. But uh, then there's another guy named Jim Chanos who says their accounting is uh, not uh, very uh, attractive to him. In mm -hmm. other words, the way they express this and that. Not and the other kosher, thing. huh? Yeah, well, according to him, he's short seller, though. And short sellers always find the uh, flies in the ointment, you know. <laughs> the that's, their jo that's their job is to throw mud a little bit, right? Yeah, look at this slide, too. That's right where price, price was exploring today. Yeah. See, kind of as it goes across all these prices, hit it, hit it, hit it. And then today it hit it again. Right. So I wouldn't yeah. be surprised to see that one drop down to the 133, which is this uh, other orange line. Right. And then go right back up. One, sideways, two, three, wave up, come back and touch the midline and go on up. I'd well, wait this, just yeah. a little bit for a pullback on that yeah. one and then yeah. buy in. A nice run you've had, but uh, either trim or wait for a pullback and then go from there. Yeah. The um, uh, car craze is going nuts because uh, Tesla came out with a big uh, announcement how many cars they sold in Q4. So that mm -hmm. made everybody in the car business uh, get a bid and uh, right. Ford and GM are going nuts. So what do we think yeah. about Ford, uh, uh, GM? And to be honest with you, if you look at the P ratios or the valuations of Ford and GM, you would think they're steals if this Tesla is going to be onto something. Mm -hmm. and, well, look uh, what Ford did today. Yep. And, I mean, GM, uh, sorry. G, yeah, GM and Ford yeah. are, are and getting that, a lot of money in there because these guys already have distribution systems and yes, they just have to. Well, Tesla was up 65 points. What is today? So yesterday it was up 65 points and today it's down 50 some. So Tesla is up and down, up and down. I mean, I had two grand in it. Now I've got 1300 in my couple shares of, of that. But yeah. Ford probably went up on Tesla going down today. I mean, GM again. Sorry. Well, I think their money is rotating or sloshing around, let's call it, um, in the uh, area. And uh, maybe some money got out of Tesla because of the valuation or whatever. And maybe they're getting into these because they think these are the uh, well, next and, teams. In and town. they're saying they're going to be highly complete that Ford, the same thing. Yeah, and they're really uh, hep on this um, F-150 thing they got. Mm -hmm. And Tesla doesn't have their truck out yet. Yeah, right. I mean, and uh, they got to, to deal with that uh, Rivian when it comes out too, I guess. Yes, yes. So those But I, are... I know a real uh, GP kind of guy, and he says uh, these cars are not really um, off-roady type things. You know what I mean? They're more gentlemen, uh, gentlemen trucks or whatever, you know? Oh, really? That's what they told me. He's out of Phoenix and he's pretty sharp with cars. So are the are the Ford car trucks um, sleek and high tech lines like? Well, the guy on from Ford, uh, CEO or CIO or one of those O's, uh, was on TV and he was saying that they have a tremendous amount of torque in their engine, much more than um, uh, their competitors, and so that's why torque is important to the truck owner. And ergo, that's why the F one fifty has got a uh, got an advantage. Because they all have tow bars on the back. Yep, yep. So yeah. people like that torque because you got to have torque to pull things, I guess. Yep. Um, well, we are at the end of the 15 uh, suspects that were put in here. Uh, why don't you, uh, if you would, go over some of the things you're looking at. And maybe if we have a little bit of time, do you do anything with commodities? I trade the S the S and P. Email. But I'm talking about, do you ever do anything like with the grain oh, the or real commodities? No, I don't. Not too much. Okay. No, I don't. Well, let's throw up some things that you're following or that you're looking at and, uh, and maybe do a little further explanation on the, how we come up with the uh, sunny bands and, uh, and some of the other indicators that are proprietary to you. Okay. The sunny bands are all our 
all four of these lines are based on this dynamic moving average calculation. The dynamic moving average is purple and gold. And that's in the middle there. And if I expand this so you can see it, you see that this thing gets in back here and stays gold for this entire run. Most moving averages, if you had a, a, a moving a exponential moving average, right? Uh, it just whipsaws all over the place. Exponential two lines. So if you put these on there, it goes back and forth and back and forth over itself and it, and, and it whipsaws you to death. So with my degrees in mathematics, I invented something that uh, is proprietary and doesn't do most of the whipsaw that the others do. Because I found out years and years ago that I could make a lot of money on trends and lose it all on whipsaw. So you get in a sideways period and it just kills you. Right. So that's what that is. And then the two outer lines are 1.2 and 2.0 average true ranges from the DMA, the dynamic moving average. And on the bottom, they're calculated, well, on both sides. The, the envelopes are calculated on uh, who's on top. So if gold's on top, then the upper line's calculated on uh, from the gold line and likewise with the bottom. But if purple's on top, then it's calculated from who the dominant cycle is. And the, hi you. the histogram on the bottom is just the difference between the purple and gold line. So as the difference narrows, uh, the histogram changes colors. And it, and, and it frequently happens that it will go down, 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 and then go purple down below the line which is a cell signal. So that, that's about as simple as it gets. It's mm -hmm. complex mathematics in the DMA, but uh, I, don't, I don't reveal that one. No, but uh, the net result you're, you're explaining. Yeah. yeah. So the net result is an average with average two ranges. Sure. And uh, what do you say this is Apple? I mean, um, uh, some people are saying that when Apple crosses their trillion dollar marks, like when they passed one trillion and then two trillion, now three trillion, it tends right. to have a pretty good size pullback. Is there any evidence oh, really? that uh, after this little move and the three trillion number being hit that we could get a decent pullback in it, maybe back towards uh, uh, the 150s uh, again? One, two, three, four, and it didn't make much of a five yet. I think it's got some a little bit more room on the upside. I got you. But so I'm, could, I'm a long term holder of Apple. Sure. You know, three to five years is my time frame on this. Sure. So I don't really care what it does during intraday periods or, you know, I've got 20 whole dollars profit in this little thing. But, um, you know, I'm looking for a thousand dollars, but over time. So I think the three trillion may may give a little bit of a hiccup and I don't really care. I'll just buy more. Right. And the other thing is, is with indexing the way it is, uh, this is 7% of the uh, S&P and 12% of the NASDAQ. So the bottom line is, is that every time anybody buys any kind of a ETF or a mutual fund or whatever, that's mirroring these They're indexes, getting Apple. They got to buy Apple. So they mm -hmm. got a natural buyer in there constantly. Yeah. And these do these guys do buy back their own stock. If you look at the uh, amount they bought they? back in the last five years, it's very dramatic. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. And of course, what do they, they, what do, they do there? They buy their stock back and then they sell it again at a higher price. No, I think they retire it. So it reduces the uh, shares outstanding, which helps the uh, relationship on price to earnings ratio. Ah, that's, that's why Buffett cool. doesn't like the idea of buying back their own stock, although he did it. <laughs> he did um, do it. Yeah, uh, but uh, he doesn't like the concept because it is kind of artificially making your PE look better than it is because you didn't increase mm -hmm. your earnings. You just uh, reduce the amount of shares, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. So. That makes good sense. Yep. So, so that's I that. I like that one. I like Microsoft. And it's about time to buy some more Microsoft. Yeah. Microsoft is the most tradable. No, not Microsoft. I'm sorry. Amazon's the most tradable stock. Yeah, now Amazon, in fact, I, there's one guy out there who um, his subscribers uh, pay money just to trade uh, Amazon every month. Oh, yeah. So there must be a pretty a big crowd who likes to do that. But well, uh, this look, yeah, see how what, what Amazon does. And I, do, I have a free newsletter that I put out every Sunday night. 
Uh -huh. I spend six hours on Sunday writing the thing, and then I give it away for free. But it's, uh, it's, and I explain that in the newsletter. This is the most tradable stock because it goes down a nice run, way back up, way back down. It just goes up and down, up and down. So that's tradable. You can trade sure. each one of these runs. And I have another indicator that I use that's called my PHW. If I can get down there fast, I've got a lot of indicators you can see. Um, PHW stands for potential hourly wage. And it puts dots on here at the perfect turning points. So you can see from, what is this? 35.54 down to 31.72, that's a great short. You know, and, uh, and then, oh my goodness, what is this one? 67.12 or 37, it's 37.12. No, it's 37.12, yeah. So 37.12 down again to 31.75. So we're yeah. going right back down to the same place and we go up and back down to the yeah. same place and back up. So it's tradable. Right now, does it look like it could bust out the bottom and go down to that 3175 again? It looks like it to me. Yeah. I mean, look how many times it hits it right there over and over and over. And then it goes about there, back and forth. So if you want to trade from the both sides, this is certainly one to do it with. Yeah. Purple's on top, so that's Say, telling me overall bearish, but it held pretty strong right here, which is kind of a middle of the road place to hold strong. It's not down and it's not up. You know, it's almost a little surprising that these guys aren't going to split this thing up and, uh, you know, get it down to a uh, hundred bucks or something like that, or 200 bucks. Well, you, yeah. yeah, you would think because it's awfully expensive. Yeah, I mean, it's your, very expensive. Your average new trader can't spend thirty seven hundred dollars on the stock. Yeah, but to get it down to two hundred bucks, you'd have to have about a seventeen to one <laughs> stock split. I don't think I've ever heard. They're of not going to do that. Yeah, <laughs> I never heard of a seventeen to one. <coughs> I always thought the okay. weird thing with GE was that reverse split where they made the stock ten times more expensive. I know. Now I have no idea. Look at GE, because that's being recommended by people quite a bit, too. Looks like it might be going somewhere. Looks like another tradable. Look at the yellow dots. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And then it, it goes up, but on the up bar, it turns red and goes down. Yeah. Purple's on top again. That's overall bearish. But the histogram is turned green already, which says that these two lines are getting closer together. And as they get closer together, they're they're more likely to cross and when gold goes on top on that then i'll be a buyer of ge yeah and, and it looks like that could be the future and look where it's going right through there over and over and over and over and over again so yeah you know we're looking at 106 from what is it right now 95 yeah you've so got 10 points to play with not bad yeah Yeah, that looks good. Um, there's a couple of stocks that I've been watching. Uh, one is in a semiconductor. It's supposed to uh, really do well. It's called UMC. I wonder if that... Uh, sure, that's not a bowling alley stock? I, I thought it was... Um, oh, that's a out here, it's a, it's, a, it's a hospital. Uh, UMC is a hospital. Anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, does yeah. It, is this thing look like it's uh, possibly going to do something? Uh, let's see. That's the high water mark, and this is over and over again, low water mark. Uh, we've got a trend line going through, a trend line right through here. That's gonna hold it down. So if it doesn't break out that trend line, it's going down further. Yeah. And where's that come in around? 1150, 1160, 1180? Uh, 1172 right there. Okay. So that's a good number to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it breaks that, I mean, I like to buy things on breakouts. Yeah. So that would be a good place. So I have a, I have a cool little way to use this software. If I go over to here and, oh, that's not where I want to go. Here, and I do a commentary, and I can click on any bar I want, and it gives me all the data points for it. So it's called commentary. Tells me the upper bands and the lower bands and the midline and the angle of the midline and 
tells me gold's on top, all in, all in one view there. So that's just, so when I when I look at this line right here, tells me that the closed price is 1151, it needs to break that. Cool, right? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Cause then, you know, you need some indicators like this to, you know, figure out what the heck's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, give you some parameters to go to. Um, any other stocks that uh, you're running into that uh, you think might be interesting? Oh, let's see. I'm I'm holding a big loss in Netflix, NFLX, which I thought you know I watch Netflix all the time. I and I and I have a cousin-in-law who works for Netflix. He's a techie with them. Yeah. So I and it you know it looks good, but it's you know, it's hitting that low right there. So, you know, uh, one thing they were expecting it to go back up to 700. Yeah, to get another run. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody was comparing Viacom to this in that, that everyone sold Viacom because they had all those losses last year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so all that selling's behind us. And they have 25% of the subscribers of Netflix, but they're only valued at like uh, one fifteenth of it. What's the symbol? VIAC, VIAC. V-I-A-C, gotta throw a C up there for CBS. Hmm. Well, that doesn't look so pretty good, does it? No. In fact, I mean, you, were, you were one who didn't think it looked good at 40. Yeah, uh, and everyone was kind of, you know, I, was, I was stiffing around it at, at the 38 to 42 area thinking that was it. And uh, at the end of the year, everybody who had a loss on it decided let's harvest this baby. Mm -hmm. And they took their loss to offset, uh, you know, other, uh, what do you yeah, call it? Gains. Other, yeah, other yeah. Um, gains, yeah. Yeah. So I think that one's still got some room to go on the downside. Yeah, it looks like it. That's for sure. Yeah, look at this. It's got the pound and surprise is right through there over and over and over on that support. And then bang, it goes back down. So I wouldn't buy that yet. That's uh, this this other this other tech stock called Keys K E Y S is okay. supposedly necessary for all types of applications or whatever, and it is really supposed to be um, something that you never sell. And I got involved in it at one fifty, and it just seems to grow every every time. So we're I'm like wondering... up at two hundred and something one ninety. Yeah, yeah. See, right when it was in the 159, 160, it kind of broke out a little bit. Mm -hmm. That was the signal mm -hmm. that you would have, and I had the same signal. And uh, right now, it looks like it's, you know, maybe you had a long run, but... Uh, Gold's on top on the midlines pointing up. I, hmm, I'd have to look up what they do because I'm not familiar with this company, but it looks like a buy to me. Yeah, it, uh, it's uh, very uh, essential uh company for uh some technologies and uh, that's why you know it just seems to go go go. they don't just make keys huh no <laughs> um how about a, an idea of this um the um travel industry is supposed to really pick up after the winter so um h uh, i think it's hg uh, uh hold on a second here it's h it's a uh, Hilton uh, Vacations, uh, HGV. Um, it looks like it's got a lot of support at 50. And, you know, if people start taking vacations, you know, would this thing fly maybe? Well, at least up to that recent high, I would say that it's going to go, what is that, 55. Uh, let me show you another thing. See this radar screen that I've got that looks like a spreadsheet? Uh-huh. Um, the... The DMA, when I look at it this way, tells me by these colors and the symbol that's next to them, tells me that HGV is bullish going up. So double slanted lines mean up. The purple one, double slanted down lines means bearish. Sure. And the red ones, it says it was going up, but now it's going down. I so got you. Definitely bullish. So the ones that are uh, the, if you're looking at this thing, the gold and the lines are good. Red and the lines means it's uh, kind of peaked out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then the other ones, you don't want to be fighting the tape. And uh, if it's right. bearish. See, I, can, uh, I can sort by those by double clicking on that column. 
I got you. See, it's all right. These are yeah. all bullish. All the ones up in the gold are all bullish. So one thing you could do for an uh, investor is uh, to plug in their stocks into this thing and then see how this indicator reads them. Yeah. I think that, would add, that, that would add a lot of value to people. Better than that, they can even purchase it for themselves if they have trade stamps. Well, and then, of course, you can show them how to do it. You know, the old yep. uh, teach a yep. man to fish kind of and thing. This is, this is what I do in my free Sunday night newsletter. Is oh, I am, okay. One of the things I analyze is this very table. I got you. Yeah, because yeah. it, it is nice to have a crystallization of all the information. Yeah, and that, you know, I'm always looking for crystallization and, and uh, colors. Yeah, a verdict. You want a verdict. You don't want to hear a hung jury. You want to hear a verdict. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. These, the green ones, are bearish. It says it was going down, but now it's going up. See? So yep. if we look at Bitcoin, was going down. Now the trend has turned and it's beginning to go up. Likewise, GE. Let's see if we can get that one to come up. So it was going down. Now it's going up. So it's turned. Uh, it's not bullish yet because it's not gold with two ups. But, you know, uh, these gold ones, see there, that's going up. TSM, Taiwan, oh, that's definitely going up. <laughs> I need to put two pipes in there so it looks like it's going straight up. You know, these, no, industrial these industrial metals are starting to come out of the chute, like Cleveland Cliffs, CLF. And it's something that I've owned and, uh, and uh, today was really starting to accelerate a bit. And um, what do they do? Uh, industrial metals. Okay. You know, they could have some- a head and shoulders on that. Like that. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't go lower with a head and shoulders pattern here. Complex yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, look at that touching all those prices with the yellow dots. Yeah. So it's we're we're climbing back to 25 and change. Yeah. And X, XME is an ETF that has a whole bunch of them in there. XME. Mm-hmm. And here's the the tractor on this one right there. So that's where we're going, 4745. And then the, the oil stocks, uh, Schlumberger and Halliburton were breaking out in my view today too. SLB. Can you spell Schlumberger? SLB. Yeah, that's the SLB. That's the symbol. But can you, oh, I'm not going to let you look at it. No, I'm not from Deutschland. I'm not a Deutschlander. Yeah, I, they used to be a customer of mine when I had my computer graphics software business. Oh, really? Yeah, so I learned to spell it. Well, it looks like a train that's going somewhere now. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, it's, look at that. It's got just a little more to go before it gets Before they grow those things. Yeah. Same thing with Halliburton, H-A-L. Old Dick Cheney's company. Yeah, same thing. Same story. Yeah. But this one looks stronger because the trend line. It really line, does. Yeah. yeah. It really, that, that one looks like it's, uh, it's uh, breaking out. It broke out. the trend line already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like I say, OPEC had a meeting uh, today and uh, they did whatever they did. And apparently whatever they did was not uh, particularly uh, negative for the pricing. What, what does gasoline cost to you? Uh, well, you know, if you go to those special places where the store gives you a discount, it's about uh, high threes. But I know in California, because I went over there, um, it can be as high as five bucks, right? I paid five fifteen for it down by the airport the other day. Hey, hey. Well, mm -hmm. you know. They see anybody, Terrible. anybody, as soon as you pass Oceanside, they figure you got a lot of money. So they start, uh, you know, giving yeah. you a haircut, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, Laguna Beach and Malibu is a definite uh, different than in Canoga Park. You know what I mean? They, True. <laughs> True. I'm sure Poway is not playing as, uh, paying as much as you are over by the coast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Poway. Poway, Poway. Yeah. You know? Lakeside, yeah. another one out there, Lakeside, you know? Yeah. I don't even know where Lakeside is. I know it's in the county but i don't know where it is i don't know that i've ever been there i uh there's some towns like jamal and uh amul amul and then uh <laughs> and then borrego springs where yeah. you know i think you'd need uh you'd need a good map to find them yeah yeah well borrego springs is real pretty in the springtime yeah the, the all the desert flowers grow yep and it's just 
beautiful. But then, you know, all of San Diego County goes out there in the spring to see it. Yeah. Like they go out to Julian to get that apple pie, right? Oh, that's good apple pie. <laughs> that is good apple pie. Uh, all right. Well, we're at the top of the hour. And I think anybody right. who is uh, listening to this would do well to uh, contact you and uh, learn more about how uh, you could help them learn more about what I they have. I would be happy to. I yeah. would be happy to. Just, I'm, I'm uh, at my desk about 20 hours a day. So just give me a call. All right, well, uh, uh, post, uh, post that contact information or uh, at least give it out there in verbal form so they can write it down. How can people get a hold of you again? 760-908-3070. Okay, and then uh, David is the website up there, uh, Money Mentor. Yeah. yeah, and I just put it in the chat, so you, mm -hmm. you've got it. And then moneymentor.com is my website, and you can email me at sunny at moneymentor.com. And uh, I'm happy to take questions. I love to talk to traders. Yeah. And there's a lot it's of things fun. that you can uh, you can fill in a lot of gaps for these people and expand their uh, analysis and research by quite a bit. I'd be happy to do that. It's fun. Well, as far as option professor is concerned, uh, we have three types of accounts on the collective uh, two. Uh, one's called uh, stocks, um, bonds, and options. The other is called swing trading. And the final one is called uh, commodities and crypto. So if you go to our website, optionprofessor.com, put your email in, we can get information to you on how you can find out what we're doing specifically in those accounts in those three areas. So optionprofessor.com, put your email in and, and we'll get details to you as well. And everybody knows that your first name is The. Yeah, The. the and mm -hmm. uh, it was a hard thing to go to school with because you, know, you, get, you, get <laughs> you get teased a lot with that kind of a first name. <laughs> All right, my dear. It's great. Right. We'll do. We'll definitely do this again because it's always a pleasure. And it's fun. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, fun. Sonny. And uh, we're you. going to turn it back over to David. And David, take the wheel. All right. Uh, yeah. Thanks to Sonny for being our first AYT uh, guest of the year. My pleasure. My pleasure. And uh, and just a quick reminder for everyone: be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube and your favorite podcast app Hello, there? to get. Uh, <laughs> get instant uh, updates on uh, when I post new. You better answer the door, David. Uh, it's not mine. That must be Jim. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <I'm muted. laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast app and um, to get instant updates when I post new episodes and uh, events. And I, and I love your service, David. I, I mean, you've, you've really got it going. I, I just oh, love, thank you. I love what you do. Oh, thank you. Well, I I love having you as a guest. So well, thank you so much. And I love um, being a guest. So now that we've patted each other on the back, <laughs> right? Say good night, Grace. Um, um, also, if you just go to timingresearch.com, you can get all the uh, current and past events there as well. So mm -hmm. just uh, thanks again to my guest for today, Sonny Harris of moneymentor.com and uh, for uh, the option prep the option professor of optionprofessor.com for moderating. And uh, um, that's it for today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, David. Thanks. Thank you.